The falls for the urgent news alert. Reports coming in from the kingdom. A woman was caught in the act of adultery. Her name, her nationality, the color of her skin is not given pending notification of her husband. She has been taken before the judge this very moment. The witnesses are already, already Already, the witnesses are all ready. And the persecutor, not the prosecutor, is briefing them on how they should get their evidence. This newsroom has learned that the woman is not being represented by counsel. She does not have a lawyer. Now her chance of being convicted is very strong. If convicted, she will suffer death by stoning. News reaching this newsroom is that the judge is a man from Galilee yeah. who was conceived by the Holy Ghost yeah. and who was born of a Virgin Mary. Yeah. A man who has demonstrated supernatural powers such as healing the sick, yes. raising the dead, Walking on water, turning water into wine, turning prostitutes into missionaries and drunkards into deacons. Yeah. His name is Jesus, a.k.a. Yes. the Son of Man, yeah. the Son of God, the King of Kings, yes. the Lord of Lords, yeah. and the Lion of the tribe of Judah. The courtroom is filled, especially by men and a few women who are standing hands folded as if praying for the accused. Let us go to Jerusalem to get a first time account of the events that are unfolding in this most historic yet unusual case. It is historical because it occurred over 2,000 years ago. It is the subject of many sermons, the basis of many interpretations, and the platforms of many examples of the loving and forgiving character of Jesus the Christ of Nazareth. It is unusual because this is the first case ever to be brought to trial, where a woman was charged with adultery. And the man, the man, the man yes. who was a part of the act was not charged also. Evidently, this action has created concerns for many women, activist groups, as well as those concerned with equality of justice. Yes. It is held that to take that it takes two to tangle. Uh -huh. And that a woman cannot commit adultery alone. And on the surface, this case to be seen to be, this case seemed to be just an ordinary one. With the exception of not, not having the man present, who was the partner of this woman? But as this mystery unfolds, we find that this event has two interpretation, a literal one and a spiritual one. Let us quickly go to John chapter 8. <laughs> if you have your Bibles, go quickly to John chapter 8 and follow me. The literal, the literal interpretation, literal means 
taking words in their usual or basic sense without any metaphor or allegory. If I use the words that you are not quite familiar with, I want to encourage you to write it down and go to your dictionary when you leave from here and search that word. Amen? Amen. It will help you along. We move quickly. Jesus in the temple early in the morning he's teaching the multitudes of people are gathered to hear him out of nowhere comes the scribes and the pharisees who brings a woman whom they said was caught the bible tells us that she was taken in the very act caught doing the thing. And so they brought her before Jesus. They laid the charges against her. I said, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. They cited Moses' law, which stated that persons caught in the act of adultery should be stoned. And they asked Jesus for his opinion in view of Moses' law. I want you to remember this now. They asked Jesus for his opinion, for his view on what ought to be done in view of what Moses said. Their motive was not good. They had bad motives. Their intentions were bad. They were trying to trick Jesus. They were trying to trap him to see if they can bring a case against him so that they could kill him. Come on now. They wanted to see if Jesus would instruct them to stone this woman without the accused being present, or they wanted and were hoping that he would make a statement that was different from what Moses had said. Amen. You know what Jesus did? He stooped down. And with his fingers, he wrote on the ground. He pretended as though he did not hear them. They continued pressing him for his views on the application of Moses' law to this particular case. This is a legal case we have under view this morning. And Jesus, after they continued to press him, you know what Jesus did? Jesus stood up and he made a shocking statement. Jesus made a very shocking statement. He that is without sin among you cast the first stone at home. He then stood back down and began to write on the ground again. One by one, one by one, yes. beginning from the elders yes. to the least, they left at Rome. They were convicted by their conscience. Somebody said conscience. conscience. How many of you in this room have a conscience? A conscience? What is your conscience? Well, this morning, your conscience is like a thermometer that thermometer on your car. It's a color gauge. You have the gas gauge, you have the heat gauge, you have the oil gauge. 
All of these are conscience for the car to tell the car that you're running hard. To tell the car that something is wrong. And God puts the same thing in us. It's called our conscience. It speaks to us. It speaks to us. And this is what bothered these men. Their conscience bothered them when Jesus said, He that is without sin among you, cast, first cast the, the stone out of And everyone, they left. They can't. Because no one, no one, nobody is without sin. Let's prove it. I want us to go quickly to Romans. The Bible says in John chapter, first John chapter one, he said, all of us have sinned. Yeah. If a man say he have got sin, he made God a liar. Yeah. And the truth is not in him. But 1 John 1 and 19 tells us that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we all have sinned. All of us. We still have sinned. Even though we are Christians and we are saved, we still do have sinned. If we say we have no sin, we make God a liar. And the Bible tells us that the truth is not in us. Amen? Amen. We find Jesus in this woman standing in the midst, now all alone. All of her accusers have gone. They dropped the case. They dropped the case. How many of you have been in a court situation where someone dropped the case? For one reason or the other, they dropped the case. These men, they dropped the case. And Jesus was there, the judge, and only the woman, and the judge and the woman was left alone. So then Jesus asked her, woman, where are those thine accusers? Had no man condemned thee? She said, no man, Lord. Jesus said, neither do I condemn thee. You go now and sin no more. Go and sin no more. My friends, we are to be instructed this morning. Because this I want to put two things on this this morning. We are to be instructed this morning that even though we are sinners, we do sin. But when God speaks into your situation, when he touches you and convicts you that you are guilty, even though no man, everybody's saying, you, you, we can't condemn you because we ain't straight either. Yeah. That don't mean that because everybody said you okay, that then you okay. Because everybody mess up. Yeah. Everybody mess up. You know what I mean when, when someone is messed up? You know how that smells, don't you? You love the person, but you just don't love the scent. And so Jesus told her, Mother, you, you. I'm letting you go, but 